All right, good evening. Uh, my name is Daniel Young. I'm the owner and founder of Adaptive Perspective and the Adaptive Perspective social media platforms. And I am talking strategy tonight, but not it's not the normal video. Uh, and, and quite honestly, uh, I'm going to double post this video. I'm going to post it to the uh, closed and fun playlist as well as the uh, overall financial strategy meme playlist. And uh, reason being is I, I was... Gosh, I was out of town this weekend uh, and took a 48-hour crazy trip. So I did not get to do a ton of research, but I've heard enough to make me extremely hesitant about uh, investing in anything on Monday. So I, I guess before I get to that, let me uh, go through the normal stuff. So it's an unedited video. Who knows what you'll hear in the background as I film these in my house. I am not a financial uh, advisor. I'm a financial strategist, really a strategist in general. And, and and I don't speak like the herd. I, I walk in very limited company and sometimes I walk alone. So uh, of what changed this past week, the Fed finally dropped rates and dropped them significantly that points to several different things. Uh, we, we knew they'd wait this long to drop rates. And they're behind the curve. They Instead of dropping at the 0.25, they dropped it farther. And they waited too long intentionally. Why? The, the economy is slowing. The, the economy is worse off than what most people say it is. Uh, even MSNBC is finally admitting that. And the Fed is attempting to influence the election in their own way. They're trying to say the economy is better off than people think. We had to cut rates this much. The economy is going to support that. And they're trying to keep their jobs. Uh, the Fed is at a point where they like control and they want to keep their jobs a lot more than they care about how we pay for stuff. They want to keep their jobs and their control and their power. They really don't care about you and your problems. And if they cared about the economy, if they cared about you, they would have dropped they would have dropped rates before summer. But they didn't. See, had they dropped rates in June, beginning of summer, and regardless of whether your job has a summer vacation or not, if we look at things based on the general school year, even through even through college, your kids are at school from August, maybe September, all the way through May, maybe June, depending on when your school starts and when it lets up. Over the summer, regardless of whether you have kids or not, Kids are out of school, parents are busier, and people kind of pay attention to the news, but they really watch the weather. They don't really see the big stuff. And that's why that initial presidential debate really didn't happen until the end of summer, because more people watch it. So if the Fed had cut rates at the beginning of summer, it would have been helpful. There's a ton of people moving. Would have helped mortgage rates, would have helped credit card rates, auto loans, all the stuff, all the stuff that you and I need if we're going to move houses and move into a better school district or a better school zone. But the Fed didn't care. They held out because when people are at home more, they don't pay as much attention to the news. So to get the best publicity possible and the most adults watching the news as possible, they did it now. And they also did it really close to the election cycle because they want to keep their jobs. So I've said this for a while. The Fed doesn't care about you. The Fed doesn't care about me. You can tell me all about how they shepherd the economy and they, they handle the behind the scenes stuff. They manipulate the economy. So they're behind the curve and they're supposed to cut rates further, but that looks really good for them and allows them to keep their jobs because everybody, it, it makes most people forget that the Fed engineered inflation. They printed, what, 40% of currency in about four to six months. They printed $4 trillion. They flooded the market with cash and devalued the dollar. 
And then now we're all feeling still, we're all feeling the bite of inflation. So we're finally cutting rates and we're behind pace. So instead of the normal Sunday breakdown of going through all this stuff, I really just want to talk general advice and, and talk general strategy. So as anticipated, the Fed finally cut rates. That pushes the fear and greed index into greed territory. If you're going to buy anything, you have to demand a discount and you have to know your strategy. You can't buy, you have to use the current market to look long term. You cannot, uh, honestly, you cannot buy willy nilly now just because you think things are better. So, my overall advice is. It, it honestly doesn't change much. If you're going to buy anything, bonds, loans, collateralized loan obligations, sorry, I'm looking at my cat in the background, uh, bonds, real estate, loans, uh, collateralized loan obligations, all of those things should fare better longer than stocks. But bonds are really my focus at the moment because they should fare better than stocks in the short run because <laughs> say inverse of a rate drop so when rates drop honestly everything does better but bond prices should significantly go up which hopefully means the dividends will go up but in the longer run with recession still looming right the fed saying hey the economy's great we cut rates that much but there's something deeper at play i think they waited too long for obvious reasons but I don't think the economy is doing as well as they say it's doing. It's almost like they're cutting rates significantly, hoping to spur growth in the economy. So you have the economy suffering and overall uh, pace of the economy slowing, which points to a looming recession. So in a recession, everything will drop except bonds. Bonds should continue to go up. They might They might keep dividends the same. They might increase. Right, maybe some will decrease. I don't know, but they should at least uh, maintain the same dividend. But stocks would go down. So if you buy now, if you buy anything now, it's more expensive than it was before the rate cut. It's more expensive than it was two weeks before. If you buy, if you buy now, hoping we don't have a recession, I, I think it's an errant hope. Um, I, it, the, econ the overall state of the economy and the, the Fed's correction of things doesn't make me confident the economy is, is, is in any type of good position. So looking forward and anticipating a recession, if I'm buying anything, I'm buying bonds. Because if I could buy stocks, to, I could buy stocks tomorrow and pay more for them than I could a month ago. And then buy them and then we hit the recession and then they'll drop. That, that's just not smart strategy to me. So it, you could hope they go up a little bit. You could buy a quantity, hope they go up 50 cents and sell the quantity and turn a profit. But that's not really my style. I want to invest in, I, I'm, I'm completely for buying and selling. I'm, I'm for uh, swinging profit forward, collect a dividend, you know, collect your capital gain and then push that money forward. I'm completely on board with that. But that's more like, it's not, but to me, it's more like day trade. Like buy it, buy it Monday, sell it Friday, buy it Monday. Sell it. It's not my style. So if I'm going to buy anything, it's bonds because it's great in this market and it's great in the, what I believe is the coming recession market. So if you buy bonds now, you have to be exceptionally choosy. And, it, and it's all wrapped up in strategy. So you're looking at the discount, but you're looking at the historical discount. You're looking at when they pay. You're looking at how they pay. You're looking at the overall dividend, right? Everything's more expensive now, so your overall dividend is less. So it, it further narrows the field for you, but you just have to be really choosy of what you want to get into. So I, I still think the market will swing. Fed cuts rates, market improves. If they cut rates again next month, right, we're going to keep going up, but I I think as we see this underlying economy really surface, or at least I think they'll try to bury it. But as we see more of this underlying economy, I think people are going to wake up to the reality of having some type of recession. So if you see a killer deal, 
and you you have money sitting, but your strategy is your strategy. For us, we're not going to buy anything more. And I mean, we'll, I'll, I'll update everything in about a week. We'll, we'll catch our new rounds of dividends. I'm waiting on certain stocks inside our individual account to get to a certain point so we can sell them and then decide what to do with the, uh, the gains. But I think the best thing to do for this week is to really take a breath and pay attention and see where you think the market's going to go. And if it, it's really all individual stuff, if, if you see a killer deal, great. If you have to invest, I mean, you, you can make a case that invested money is better than parked money, right? That better uh, money parked in your bank account is gaining less than 1% at interest. So invested money, you can make a case for, especially if you're using our dividend system. Uh, and if you need to sell some funds, right? But on buying and in my cat, and if you're buying a lot, I would, I would, Really make sure your strategy is sound and you have a plan for now and you're not just buying into that greed site. So I'm, more than anything, I think we have to be cautious. Uh, the, there are a lot of hot spots. I mean, and I keep pushing. So bonds, real estate, um, Energy to a degree is hot, but at the same time, we're not buying energy because it's higher today than it was when we bought it. So I, I think you still have to demand a discount and you have to demand a significant discount. But at the same time, I would caution you in how you're investing now. Because if you get if you get sucked into the greed cycle and you get sucked into that fear of missing out till they drop rates again, that's not a good place to be. See where you think the market's going to go. Invest accordingly based on today's prices or whatever prices are at the time, right? But then also look five, 10 years, 15 years out. Invest where you think you need to be and then be confident in that. But first and foremost, be cautious. It's not a fear of missing out. It's going to be up and down as the Fed's cut rates. And this up and down... I mean, the election cycle, not much is changing day to day per se, unless, you, unless you're looking uh, deeper than media deep. And if you can find a, a better beeline on the economy, that'll advise you much better than anything on the news. So if, if you like my content, consider subscribing to my channel. Hit the like button. It really does push videos out. And regardless of where you are in your portfolio, regardless of where you want to go beyond wherever your dreams lie, none of that's going to happen on its own. You can hope somebody else has a plan. You can hope somebody else will do it for you. But the best thing you can do is increase your knowledge, one, read a ton, right? But then develop your own strategy and have a battle plan that'll get you from where you are to where you want to be. And if that doesn't make sense, or if that's very brand new to you, then come check out my navigating your your navigating your finances page on Facebook, and I talk about our twelve uh, step system and how to get from point A to point B. And it's not so much uh, the point A to point B that culture advises. It's like from where you are to retirement, it's, it that point B exists always on the horizon. You, you actually never reach it. You accomplish a lot on the way. You, you're where you are and you have goals and you have dreams and you you do amazing stuff on that journey. But the journey never ends because like if you if you had your point B on the deserted island where the treasure chest is, based on the map you've made, your journey would end on the island, you would dig the treasure up and find it and die there. And nobody wants that. So point A is where you are and point B is always in front of you. You just get to do a lot of amazing stuff on the way. So if that sounds interesting or if you just think I'm off my rocker, come check out the group and see what you think. Uh, regardless, whatever it is that you want to do, it's not going to happen on its own. You have to make it happen. So if you want to do some crazy stuff and some crazy bucket list stuff, 
you can have the dream and it'll comfortably sit there. But unless you actually do something about it, it's not going to happen. So whatever it is that you want to do, whatever it is that you retire before 50, I don't know, island hop on a yacht. I mean, whatever it is that you want to do, make that happen. Figure out where you are, figure out where you want to go and figure out how you can make your dreams happen. I wish you a great week. Hope everything goes well. I will see y'all in another video. Bye-bye.